Why do you go to Manesson, Pennsylvania to talk about trade with Korea? Because that's where President Trump gave by far the most important speech of the campaign. This was in June 2016, where he laid out in detail everything he was going to do on trade policy. He was going to pull out of the Trans-Pacific Partnership. He was going to demand a renegotiation of NAFTA. He was going to appoint a hawkish trade negotiator. By far his most substantive speech. The last time a president or presidential candidate had been in Manesson right. was JFK in 1960. There were 21,000 people in Manesson. In 1962, when Trump goes there in 2016, there's 7,000 people left in that town. It's one of the places right. that got left behind in the global economy. I went to the Economic Club in New York yesterday for Bill Dudley, and the talk there was Francine Lacroix's interview with uh, Secretary Ross in London. Ross Navarro, many people will say, is a zero-sum trade policy for the United States. Does the President of the United States still ascribe to Ross Navarro? Oh, I think there's no question he does, though, though the question is, how is he going to carry this stuff out in, in reality? The FT had an editorial saying that the, the, the president's trade policy so far has been ignorant but not substantively harmful. And, and I think we're waiting to see where a lot of the shoes are going to drop. When he says things like he did in, in Japan, well, the Japanese should be building more cars in the United States. I mean, Toyota built three quarters of its cars for the American market here in the United States. So I worry about the president's grasp on detail.